Welcome back to Breakfast Daily on City TV. And yes, we know that every October is Pink October. And pink in the month of October stands for breast cancer awareness. Throughout the whole month of October, all over the world, people are raising awareness about this incurable disease that claims so many lives each and every year. There is no cure for breast cancer, but with the awareness that we're creating, hopefully we can help to prevent people from getting it. And eventually one day, we can celebrate a cure that could be discovered. Well, I'm here with Dr. Kelvin Owusu, who is our resident medical expert here on Breakfast Daily. Uh, he's with Optima Care Diagnostics, and he's going to talk us through breast cancer, exactly what it is, what the treatment options are, what the symptoms are, and why we should all be aware of the latest developments in the fight against this deadly disease. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Kokui. Good to see you. Good to be here. I know. Um, it's, it's, it's my first time with you. You know, usually... <laughs> The men yes, sit and talk, yes, yes. but because I have breasts, I'm talking to you today. Okay. Well, I also because have breasts, you know. Y yours is chest. Mine is breast. <laughs> <laughs> yours is chest. Mine is breast. <laughs> but no, it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've got my pink ribbon on. You know, the symbol for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So let's let's just do a breast cancer 101 for All our right. viewers. What is breast cancer? Well, uh, so let's take it. Let's do what is cancer. Okay. So basically, right. um, the 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 cells in your body. Are constantly undergoing change and um, dying and being replaced you see it more obviously in your hair sometimes you wake up you, see, you notice hair on your on your pillow or as yes. you comb your hair, hair hair falls out you see your skin peeling you know that's normal okay. and as the old cells die of new cells replace them now when this system of dying and being replaced goes haywire where cells are no longer dying anymore but then new cells are still being produced to sort of replace the cells which are supposed to have died but are not dying basically the the growth of these cells are no longer responding to the controls of the of their brain then we say you have cancer so mm. then this cell sort of becomes a, a, a mass which we call a tumor right. now what makes cancer unique is that um, as the tumor grows it gets to a point where it begins to break off and then implant elsewhere so then we say the cancer has begun to spread mm -hmm. so when this um cell um this this dysfunction occurs in the breast then we say you have breast cancer got it exactly now there are different cell lines in the breast so that's where you have the different kinds of breast cancer. So I All mean, right. the breast cancer is it's not one um, disease that is called breast cancer. Th this is good information yes, because, yes. you know, we generalize. We've True. got a whole month for one thing, but there are different types. Yes, there are different types. I mean, point is, if you, we are well educated about breast cancer, whether it be general or specific, it's good. Because once you notice an abnormality in your breast, you want to do something about it. Okay. You know, for you knowing the specific type of cancer may not necessarily be important. Mm. You know, but I'm just bringing that to, to show that there are different cells in the body and all these cells can become cancerous. Okay. So there are different cells. I mean, just to the layman, you have cells that produce milk. Yes. You have cells that actually carry the milk. Uh, you know, so all these, all these, all these different cells can actually be the origin of the cancer, you know, and it has some uh, nitty gritty when it comes to the treatment. So depending on what specific type of breast cancer you have, okay. the treatment might be a bit different. Hmm. You know? So yes, um, to, to an extent, um, there, there are different kinds of breast cancer. Okay. Now <laughs> it used to be that we would hear about breast cancer in women, let's even say 40 and above 50, sure. something for women who are maybe perimenopausal or postmenopausal. Now we're hearing of, I mean, I heard the other day of a girl, 18 years mm -hmm. old, mm -hmm. who has stage four breast cancer. And I thought, yeah. how does an 18 year old get, get breast cancer? What is happening? Is it that something environmentally is happening or genetically is happening for more younger people to be getting it? Or is it just that it has been that way, but now we're getting it reported more. So we're detecting it earlier in people. It's a little bit of everything. So um, it has always been the case that um, um, cancer in general is an age-related thing. So as you grow older, your, your probability of developing cancer also grows, I mean, okay. goes higher. You know, but we are, we are hearing a lot more of younger people developing cancer. That's, on one aspect, is because we are more educated and more aware of it. So we are, we are becoming more uh, um, aware of the fact that somebody is developing problems with their breast. You know. On the other hand, our, our, the environment is also playing a major role. Mm. You know, and it's typically in our setting in, in, in Africa or in Ghana, before now, a lot of our food, a lot of our habits were, yes. were more of, uh, we're, we're doing more active work. So we're working more, you know, we're doing more physical activity, mm. farming, fishing, whatever. And then we're eating more, uh, we're eating less processed food, yes. you know, more organic uh, food. Now we're eating a lot more processed foods and, and, and we, are, we are more sedentary. And all of these things come together is making, is, 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 is increasing the incidence of cancers mm. in general, including breast cancer. And mm. then also we are indulging more in uh, recreational, um, 
um, habits such as smoking. Mm. So we have a lot more women smoking, um, a lot more women indulging in alcohol, and all these are things that also predispose us to cancer. Wow. And then, <laughs> um, this is controversial, but okay. I, have to, I have to say it anyway. All right. um, technically, we are, we, are, we are giving birth to fewer children. Yes. Yes, and that is an issue when it comes to breast cancer. How so? <laughs> I, I, I must stress on this one. Okay, how so? You see, um, so breast cancer, there's a heavy linkage, or let me, uh, again, re re take it back a bit. You notice that during your cycle, your menstrual cycle, at some point, you notice how your, your breasts become heavier, become a bit tender. Yes. This is because of the hormones acting um, on the on the female body in general you know because it's preparing the body for pregnancy mm -hmm. then the pregnancy does not happen so all the all the preparation sort of involutes it goes back to normal now so the breast is heavily hormone dependent now these hormones are also linked to breast cancer you know so the more un uninhibited hormone activity on the breast the more likely you are to develop cancer Got it. pregnancy is a situation or a physiological a physiological abnormality <laughs> so when you are pregnant there's a break in the hormones action on your breast mm. you know so the, the the number of times you 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 cause that break you give the breast some rest that reduces your risk of developing breast cancer it actually which then means you. that <laughs> which then means that a woman who has never given birth or never had a successful pregnancy is at a higher risk of developing breast cancer Wow. than a woman who has had multiple births. Yes. Now, this might be a plus for those who are, you know, have big families. However, the more children you have, the higher your risk of developing cervical cancer. So you have to sort of... <laughs> you you, you, you for balance the thing. Exactly. But how you for balance out? So yeah, you have to balance the, the whole thing. Little or few to no children, higher risk of breast yes. cancer, but many children, higher risk of cervical cancer. Yes. And, and in relation to that, a woman who has who also breastfeeds his, I mean, her children, yes. again reduces the, the 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 chance of developing breast cancer. So that's another another plus or another feather in the cup of exclusive breastfeeding because the longer you breastfeed, the 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 the, the longer you delay the hormones um, return to function. Right. You know. So that's that's something that we need to do. So one, okay. on one hand, um, we are hearing about it more in younger people because of awareness. Mm. On the other hand, it's it's actually a, a reality because of our environment. But let me also chip this in that you mentioned genetics and genetics yes. actually plays a major role which is why we say that if there's a family member who has had breast cancer your chance of develop, developing breast cancer is high mm -hmm. in fact there, there's now now we have evidence that there's a gene i'm sure you heard about is it angelina jolie yes. who had a double mastectomy yes and because they did the test and she realized that she had that gene so the her mother died of, of that exactly yes yeah, so, to so she went to do the, t the testing thankfully she's in an environment where you can actually do the test yes so. <laughs> it's, it's still expensive over there but at least you can do it mm -hmm. we you can do it here but it's not as easily accessible mm. and or av available okay. and it's also very, very expensive but there's a gene that if you have it your chance of developing breast cancer and other cancers is significantly higher mm. than the general population so there is a genetic composition and that that person who is 18 and had the stage 3 yes. most likely has that genetic um, um, mm. um, predisposition okay but because we, we are unable to check at the moment that's why nobody picked it up early enough let, let's talk about symptoms and detection and all of that. Now, for the person in question, the 18-year-old, they saw something early mm -hmm. on, but they delayed in getting the appropriate treatment. So it was, let's take it to a prayer camp. Let's, and then when it got to the fourth stage, which yeah. was the deadly stage, then they decided to seek medical intervention, which, of course, is almost too late. But how do you even detect or know if there are symptoms of so, breast cancer. So this scenario you are painting is actually a typical um, story from a lot of um, breast cancer patients out there. They, de they did notice some. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to convince me that you didn't notice any change in your breast because the hmm. breast is so, it's so obvious. You know, it's like it's sitting right in front of you. So hmm. when there are changes... Challenge! <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, you just... You're in it's, your routine. You, you know, you, it, unless something maybe is... is Mm -hmm. really visible or stands out prominently you may it may not occur to you immediately that oh something so, looks a bit so different when, when you speak to them they do they, they will confer, confirm the, that they did notice something yes. but then they were they didn't know what it was so they decided to observe it mm. you see so that's why education is very very important because when, once you notice anything that is unusual or anything that is is new you need to pay attention to it and report us if you are not too sure even if you are sure what's going on let somebody also have a look at it somebody who somebody more objective have a look at it so that you know what's going on you see because the thing about cancer is that if you wait for symptoms it's probably too late to intervene 
So oh. symptoms are actually the last. We don't want to see symptoms at all. Mm. We want to catch the, the, the and then the whole point of screening is to pick the thing up before it announces its presence. We don't want cancer to announce its presence before we know it's there. Mm. We want to pick it before it, uh, it, even, uh, it, it even announces that I'm there. So that's why all the cancer screenings are done before symptoms. Okay. Because by the time you notice symptoms, chances are it has already spread hmm. so we don't want symptoms okay however some of the symptoms of breast cancer would be it would be a lump that's the the the, the typical thing that everybody looks for so you feel something that feels like a lump in your breast yes if you, well, if you feel something hard something something out of the ordinary okay. in your breast if you notice anything like that you have to you know take it seriously and report for somebody to assess it so a lump is very very it's a, it's a clear sign that something is going on but let me be quick to add that a lump does not necessarily mean that it's cancer. Right. You see, because again, some people too, when they notice a lump, then it's like, let me, let, me just, let me just forget everything. I'm oh. already, I'm dead already. <laughs> so they don't even bother going to hospital at all. I mean, I have met some, a couple of women like that. Mm. It's like, I saw the lump and now it's like, it's cancer. So let me just, let me just make my peace oh. with my God, you know. Oh. But <laughs> so they could, they could be help at that stage. It, and it, it, yeah. it may not even be cancer. Mm. Right. You right. see, but, but, but once it's a lump, let's go have a look at it and see what it is. Right. So lump is a, it's a, it's a very important um, thing to look out for. Okay. Then you might have a discharge from your nipple. Mm. I mean, you are not pregnant, you are not lactating. So so any discharge from your nipple, it's uh, especially if it's bloody or it's brownish or has an offensive smell, mm. you want to have a look. Uh, have somebody examine it and see what's mm. going on, you know. Now and then you might also have some discoloration, and um, if you have not had any trauma, nobody has punched you or you have not fallen down and you notice discoloration on your breast, mm -hmm. you need to take it seriously. Or if you notice thickening of the skin around the around the breast, any part of the breast, mm. you want to have it um, examined as well. Okay. If you also notice that um, some a dimple, you know the dimple you, you have in your cheek <laughs> yes. or, your, or your chin, if you notice that a dimple suddenly appear on your on your breast, you need to take it seriously because it could be um, a, a cancer that is invading the skin, so preventing the, the, that part of the skin from the, having the normal contour. You know, so you have to pay attention to it. In fact, it's because of this dimpling that when you are doing a self-examination or you go to hospital for a breast examination, one of the first things you are asked to do is to raise your hand straight up. Yes. You know, because once you do that, if there is something holding the skin, it will become more obvious, mm. and mm. that could be the first sign that something is going on. What about if there is a change in size? A change. Maybe you notice that, ah. You wake up in the morning and you're like, my bust looks bigger than it did yesterday. <laughs> What's going on? Could that, could that well, be an if, indication of something? If it's your something? bust in general, then it could be you're either putting on weight and mm -hmm. you're now becoming more aware of it. Or there's that time of the month that, you know, you generally have a, a bigger bust because of the hormone activity. Okay. You know, but uh, what, 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 what most people would typically notice is that um, everybody has one breast uh, either uh, bigger or hangs lower than the other. Yeah. You know, so if you notice that the one that hangs, um, the one that is smaller, suddenly is the same size as the one that is bigger you mm. know that's not too obvious to everybody else but you can tell if my left breast is supposed to be smaller but suddenly it looks like um, it's the same size as my right or okay. it's it's now bigger than my right then that's something that you should take note of okay. or if my left breast is bigger than my right but now it looks like it's much bigger than it's supposed to be mm. then again you should note that you notice that there's something going on okay you know and so have it examined properly all right very very important very good very good information <laughs> i mean I've, they tell us you should check once a month you know you should examine your breasts when you're in the shower preferably why why should we do it when we're just out of the shower in the shower <laughs> why, why is that the best time to um, check I, your think, I think it's 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 convenient because you're already you're, you're already out of your clothing mm -hmm. you know you probably have a mirror in front of you so it's much easier to check to do an examination okay. in that situation All right. because there's really no no specific time you should do it i mean you should do it as often as you as often as you can i mean okay. it's your it's your breast so mm -hmm. you should know it you should know it more than anybody else even your partner should not know your breast more than you mm -hmm. because if there's a change you will notice it first but let me be quick to also add that um the, the breast extends into the armpit. We call it the axilla. Mm. It ex extends into the armpit. And interestingly, that is where most cancer would develop from Whoa. because that is where most people ignore. So you have to pay attention to that, that part as well. If you do an examination, whether self or somebody does it, and the person doesn't check the armpit, it's not complete. I see. You know, so you have to make sure that you, are, you also examine your armpit area to see what's going on over there. Is there anything that can be done to prevent breast cancer? So this is a tough question to answer. Okay. <laughs> um, let, let, hmm. Hmm. We don't actually know, apart from the people who have their genetic predisposition, okay. you know, they have the gene that we know would cause them to have cancer. Hmm. We actually don't have any other cause of cancer per se. We know associations. Okay. And so because we don't know what causes it, it will be difficult to prevent it 
totally. <laughs> you know, so that's why again it's important to keep screening because okay. so that you can pick it early enough for intervention to be done. And again, um, cancer diagnosis doesn't mean that they are going to cut off your breast mm -hmm. because that's that's one reason why women, some women, run away from the hospital. Wow. You know, <laughs> you know. So if we catch it early, we don't have to cut off the breast. Okay. You know, we can go in and deal with the cancer itself. Okay. You know. So having said that, some of the associations, and I, I think I mentioned it in the beginning, in the yes. beginning when I talk about and uh, the environment. You know. So people who I mean, avoid smoking. Smoking, drinking. Because smoking not only causes breast cancer, it causes so many other things. Mouth, throat, stomach. Lung. Uh, so many, so many things. Okay. The, the, the lung is the obvious one, but it causes so much, so much damage all over the place. Very quickly before you go, Doc, uh, treatment. So you've talked about, I mean, some people may have to get a mastectomy depending yes. on the cancer. Any other treatment options that people have very quickly? So there's radiation there's chemotherapy mm -hmm. and, and there's also hormonal therapy hormone replacement and even now there's immunotherapy as well so the treatment mm -hmm. options are quite a lot depending on what specific cancer you have and what stage of cancer you have All right. sometimes or in fact most times even after you've done a surgery whether it was a mastectomy or it was a, um, a lumpectomy or whatever it is that that was done uh, you still need to take some chemotherapy or radi radiotherapy to try and mm -hmm. um, target um, any spread that may have been missed Okay. You know, because I mentioned that once you notice symptoms, probably it has already spread. So after the treatment for the main cancer, we give you subsequent treatment to target any other areas that might have been exposed, even okay. though it might not have been picked up on the investigations. Okay. Now, Pink October continues. So Doc will definitely be back next week, we hope, God willing, to give us more education on breast cancer, right? But they can contact you, right? Give us your handles, your, yes, how well, people can get I'm in touch. I'm active on social media, Kelvin Osu MD. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Great too. to see you again, and thank you for the education. Dr. Kelvin Owusu giving us some important information about breast cancer. Check your breasts if you're a woman, even if you're a guy. Mm -hmm. Check your breast, check your partner's breasts. Get screened this month of October and check regularly. You can prevent it, hopefully, if you catch it early.